Hello, Jay. Hey, Nancy. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. How are you doing? I am doing fantastic. Uh, I know you have been doing a ton of press for this album, so thank you so much for doing this. Well, just a little bit, but nothing unwieldy. <laughs> What I'm going to try to do is spare you from the two questions that you continue to get asked interview after interview. How did you get together with Liv Warfield, and where did you come up with the name? So I'll actually explain that to my listeners before, because I'm like, if she has to answer that one more time, oh. <laughs> her head is going to explode. But, uh, you know, and it's funny... It's funny because I keep doing research on you, and just when I think I've come up with questions that you haven't answered, I find you've answered the questions. I'm like, man, this is getting harder and harder to find stuff she hasn't <laughs> talked about. Yeah, you have to go like on a treasure hunt for that, I guess, now. Well, how about this? I <laughs> want to say a, a happy birthday, belated birthday to your dog, Wally. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, so then on Facebook <laughs> today, right. I have been following yeah, your career yeah. since the 70s. Uh, you know, and I am not one of those guys that has ever said she's pretty good for a girl. I always thought you, <laughs> you guys were a rocking band. You were right up there, you know, from the 70s and all those big festivals with Aerosmith and, you know, Ted Nugent and Journey and all those sorts of things. So uh, you've always had respect yeah. in my book from the first time I heard Magic Man uh, on my transistor radio in my bed. Uh -huh when I was a little kid. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So yeah. I love this new album. The way you have, you know, put R&B meets rock. This is so fresh. It's great. I've been absorbing the album for about the last four or five days. Now, let me ask you, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this stuff. You originally had Get Loud and Not Giving Up. Is that correct? Uh-huh. Those were our first, first songs along the way. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you have Even It Up and These Dreams and the Hold On To My Hand uh, by Colin Hay. How long did it take you to write the rest of the songs? Because, correct me if I'm wrong, you recorded this in about three days? Well, we had two different sessions um, where everybody flew to L.A. from Seattle, Chicago, where uh, Ryan and Ben are both Seattleites and um, live in Chicago, so we had to like we had to get together for the first like three days just to kind of meet, figure out some songs. Um, the first song we worked on was actually a song written by Colin Hay, um, "Hold On to My Hand." But the first song we wrote was "Get Loud." Mm. And then Not Given Up was mostly already written by Liv and Ryan. So in each of these cases, we we started out arranging a song that had been written by Colin Hay of Men at Work. Um, Hold On To My Hand came together so fast. Then we I had some lyrics, Liv had some lyrics, the guys had a few different jams that we just plugged in with together. Liv and Ryan actually wrote Not Giving Up pretty much. We just tweaked the lyrics to that. But um, all told, between getting together and then getting together a different time and then recording for real and then finishing might have been about two weeks total. Okay, so still pretty you know, quick. So it was, yeah, but every the first session we got songs going right off. So we knew we wanted to do it. We wanted to make a band. We wanted to record an album, and we were just sort of burning up to get it done. So we did it fast. Yeah, and it's strong. It's very strong. I know you've, uh, you know, n Not Giving Up definitely has that little Zeppelin feel, as do a lot of songs. I know you've yeah. been asked a lot about the song The Dragon, which, before I even read what it was about, really caught my ear. And you had been sitting on that song for quite some time, from what I understand. I have been, yeah. I, I, I feel now it was never really destined to be a heart song, um, though I wrote it in the 90s, during the time after the 80s, when the sort of heart kind of went back home and tried to re, um, reinvent ourselves a little bit. Mm -hmm. After the 80s, it was so much about imaging and 
not so much about music anymore, you know, so it was a real, we were not, we did not feel defeated, but we felt beat up, mm. you know, by it. And uh, so we went home and we kind of looked around at the Seattle music scene that was happening at the time, and those guys in the band, like Down Garden and Allison James and Pearl Jam, you know, they took us under their wing because we felt a little bit wounded out of, after the 80s. Yeah, yeah, which was very cool of them, and it just goes to show, you know, what they what they thought of your band. They had a, an integrity issue with some of the hair bands that the end of the, by the end of the 80s, you know, mm -hmm. some of that ethic happening in music, and that's what they were pushing against. But when we got back to Seattle, they were really welcoming, and we, we became pretty close friends with many of them, and um, and with Lane Staley from Alice in Chains, you know, he was one of those really, like, interior sweet people who was too kind of painfully shy for anyone to ever watch him sing a lead vocal in a studio. You know, he was just so interior and um, but sweet as they come, and uh, so we all, as his friends and kind of family, of Seattle family, all saw him um, going down the, the really dark path, you know, towards addiction, addiction. And yeah. He just seemed to be stuck into this vortex that nobody could help him get out of. And <clears throat> that's when I wrote The Dragon for him initially. Unfortunately, nowadays, it's, it's a few other friends that it's also about... And it just the the grip of an addiction in general that's so so destructive for so many people. Yeah. And on such a big scale. But um, I guess the song just took a few. You know, it, it was a song that I would sing. So I never had that many songs usually with heart to be able to sing. Right. And so it sort of found its own way finally back to the surface and. All these years later, it's sort of, it sounds new again. It's interesting. Certain songs will kind of drop out of the sky, and you have all oh, these lyrics over here, this was that jam, like Russian did. But that one's like, somebody said, what about that song, The Dragon? I said, yes, I should finish that. And I, it was meant to be for this band. Not just that song, but as I listen to the lyrics of the whole album, it seems very appropriate for the times, for what's going on in the world. Yeah. Thank you. That's intentional, obviously. Mm. Um, there's, we're in such a... Uh, <laughs> Crazy world. We're in such a lot of trouble. Oh, uh, yeah, I yeah. know. It's there's scary. More, more, there's a lot more trouble in the world than there needs to be. And it's just being escalated and amplified and magnified in the stupidest of all ways. And, you know, we're all just trying to, we're just all reeling to keep some kind of balance at all with this idiocy, you know. I thought the 60s were bad. <laughs> you know, speaking of that, what's interesting is I was, as I was getting ready the other day, because, you know, I always start my day with music. And as I said, I've been absorbing myself in this new Road Case Royale album. Uh, I love and, it. Yeah, and... I heard, you know how sometimes you just got something on and it and it sticks. Sort of what I read, what you said about the the Colin Hay song. You know, you had it on Pandora and you kept hitting thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. And I heard cover each other, and I thought, wow, yeah. this is another song that's absolutely perfect for the time. And I know you just released a video, I believe, yesterday for that song. But yeah. great That's lyrics, right. once again, it's like perfect for the time, you know? It's like, yeah, we got to cover each other. Yeah. Well, that's a, yeah, that's a message of, it started out, when I started writing those words, it was from my husband, Jeff. But then when I wrote that, it, it sounded more universal. I think that song was, um, yeah, it inadvertently kind of became another sort of a message yeah. people really need to hear. And so far, that the comments on that one have been so positive. 
That's a song I really needed to hear today. Now that you tell me it's about your husband, Jeff, it, it makes even more sense. Who, by the way, seems to be extremely supportive and really seems to be the one that really pushed you to get Road Case Royale moving quickly. Yeah, he did, because when I felt that heart was, um, might disappear, you know, the, the rug sort of got pulled out in a way, emotionally, yeah. with heart. And it looked, I had no idea what heart was going to, I still sort of wish I knew, but he made it a point, and wisely made it a point, knowing me well enough to know that if I didn't have another creative outlet and another creative um, project to build and work, you know, build myself into that I was going to be in a worse, in a worse, in suffering in a much worse way. Yeah. With something to go to. So that was a really understanding, great thing that he encouraged me to do. Mm -hmm. And it was not the easiest you know, not the obvious thing to do, obvious, you know, but the best thing to do. I agree. I tell you, another song I really love on this album is Insaniac. Thank you. Yeah, I was really, really hurt. <laughs> and, uh, you know, kind of insulted, and uh, I felt like somebody had come and, um, you know, just run a knife through me. Um, because what happened, that's an ugly, tough situation that no family should, especially no note, family of note or any family should ever have to go through. Yeah. You know, in my, in some people say, oh, just sweep it under the carpet. Well, you can't do that in the case, in my case, because it's against the law to try to do that. Yeah. Like and I didn't. Under age. Yeah, and I certainly didn't want to harp on that, but, you know, being as you brought it up, I couldn't agree more. That is not something yeah. that goes away easy. You know, I have kids, I have siblings, no. I understand, and, yeah. you know, I could see why, it's you know. Pretty, that's pretty indelible stuff that there's no real excuse for. And so, you know, that I was angry and I was hurt by all of that stuff that happened and, and how it was not very, I thought it was treated in a very clumsy way. And... All I could do was what I knew was right, which was to, you know, go legal. And so, um, so anyway, that was my that was my scree of a song about that situation, where you know, I guess in a lot of cases there's pretty intense rock songs that are written in similar situations. Yes, like indeed. Barracuda. Yeah. So. And I give you a lot of credit for finishing up that tour. You could have easily canceled out the rest of the tour and went home. I give you all a lot of credit for hanging in there and not disappointing oh, the fans. Well, that's really amazing. That's really perceptive of you because there was a lot of shows left to do and that was pretty interminably difficult. I can only you know, imagine. That was, that was bad. <laughs> that was a really bad scene, man. But, um, yeah, we we were offered an opportunity to to stop the tour, but I think because Jeff was with me, I was able to finish the tour because we didn't know what was going to happen next with Hart. And you know, way I to this day, I still hope that when Anne and I can actually communicate with each other about what Hart might want to be, then yeah, then we'll have that talk. But right now, you know, I'm super happy doing what I'm doing, and I feel really positive about it. Yeah, and I also it's read in, I also read in a few um, interviews that you did, you said that, you know, this project really sort of saved your life because of the pain of all that stuff, and, you know, Hearts yeah. basically been your only band for so many years, so Road Case Royale was just, again, your husband Jeff pushing you into it, and, you know, gave you a, a whole new way to go about things. Yeah, it was a, it was definitely a lifesaver. Uh, you know, I felt like I was pushed out of an airplane with no parachute, you yeah. know, emotionally, and so... So artistically, it was it was like being somebody catching me, 
you know, midair. Which is great. Helping you land safely. You know, which is great, and sort of like you said how, you know, uh, a lot of songs like Insaniac are written from that, you know, kind of like this whole album, it it, it almost seems like it would be very, this whole project, but especially the album, very therapeutic for you. Oh, definitely. It's, it's, um, It's so invigorating to be in this band. Yeah. Um, And, you know, even though we we're we have a little postponement going on with. I know. I'm feeling you for that, man. With Bob getting hurt, so now. Yeah. You know, I know you were supposed to be out with Bob Seger until like the end of November. So what's the plan now? Well, so far, what we've heard so far is that. You know, his team of expert doctors are, are um, and also because of logistically how these um, hockey teams are starting the hockey year and the, mm-hmm. the places that we were going to play are, are turning over into the sports arenas again. So it looks like the safest and best plan is going to be early in the new year to go back out and fulfill the postponed dates again, which will be a blast. Okay, and, so it is going, it is scheduled. Definitely adding more. So it is scheduled to, to continue once Bob is feeling better. Yeah. Good. Bob Seeger's um, shows were re, are, are on hold, but for our, so we had some solo shows between the Seeger shows that were headliners that were, um, we had to cancel because we couldn't, um, really actually afford to go out as a solo mm. artist without the big scene of Bob Seger's shows. Yeah. To, um, that one. Yeah, I'm aware it costs just money. a little. But then in the new year, you know, we'll probably, uh, we'll probably go out and do some amazing shows just for Roadcase in the meantime, keep ourselves well oiled for the Bob Seger shows early in the new year. Yeah. Well, what's Cheap Trick doing? Get get them on the road. You go out with Cheap Trick. I know. I know. They're always on the road. They're always on the road. <laughs> now I got to tell you a couple funny. Yeah. Uh, uh, I got to ask you something. Then I got to tell you something funny. Now I know that um, I've I've heard two versions of the story. I heard that you and and Rick Nielsen and Robin Zander were having drinks here in New York. And Robin and Rick gave the thumbs up on going with Liv. But then I also heard that Liv and Ryan were there having drinks with you. Yeah, Liv and Ryan were both there. And we we showed, actually, Robin and Rick the footage from the um, uh, the show that we'd seen Liv on, uh, Jimmy Fallon's show. Yeah, I know, I'm know. i well aware, fun. yeah. That's the question I was trying to save you from. <laughs> That's the, yeah, that's the reason we wanted them to see her thing live. Right. Her, you can meet her, and she's like, like a sweet, kind of demure, fun, you know, angelic sort of person. Then you see her perform, and she's just like, you know... Oh, she's a badass. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to say it. She's yeah, she's tough, badass. man. Yeah, her voice so is just rocking. Talk, we were just... I would, put it on my phone and those guys were looking at it going oh shit yeah you know yeah. yeah. On a little on a little sidebar here, I'm a huge Aerosmith fan, as is my longtime girlfriend. Oh wow! And we were, you know, at a show with uh, Aerosmith and Cheap Trick, and I'm backstage talking to Joey Kramer, and my girlfriend was chatting with Jack Douglas, and Robin walked up, and uh-huh. Cheap Trick is one of her like very favorite bands, and Robin walked up. And to this day, she gets all Google Gaga when she thinks about that moment. I didn't see her act that way with Joe Perry. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so, you know so tell me that he's happily oh, married yeah. and taken because I don't want her leaving me for Robin. Oh, well, he appears to be very happily married when we were out on the road with those guys last time with Joe and Jet and all that. Yeah. Um, you know, he would fly, he would fly home to be with his wife, sort of humming out of, off the tour. Um, I think she had a health issue at the time. I don't know what, but he was there going home and doing all these double time, you know, long days just to be where she was, which was really a sweetheart. Yeah. Thing to do. And 
He's definitely a sweetheart. He's um, one of the best singers on the planet. Oh, I love Cheap Trick. Always have one since the, back in the one day. One of my favorite moments, favorite moments working with those guys is to hear Robin warming up his voice in the hallways backstage. He's like, ah! He'll do some like kind of operatic stuff, but then he'll do some like super cleaning stuff and. He's like, excuse me, I'm just warming with <laughs> you guys. So, like, it's so, so impressive. Well, I'll tell you, I got nervous the way, you know, when I walked back and my girlfriend goes, oh, my God, I just met Robin Zander. I've never seen her react like that. I got nervous. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, he's happily married. I'm sure you. All right, good. I'm so, safe. But I'm yeah, safe. A good question. All right, a couple other quick things. I know you're involved with, um, I recently interviewed Liberty DeVito, Billy Joel's longtime drummer, and he, as well as you, are involved in Little Kids Rock. Yes, that's right. We did, I did a thing recently in L.A. with a group of students, and mostly a lot of them were girls, which was really cute, because mm. they're all young girls, learning to be in rock bands, which was very, very exciting for me because it seems like it seems like the MTV 80s like put us on a hold there for a while for that to happen and now it's happening for the next ones coming up, I think, I hope. But there were girl bands and drummers and guitar players and singers and they were doing mostly some heart songs, some some uh, Fleetwood Mac songs and then we uh, surprised them with some free guitars. That's great. Like, um, so it was really, you know, they got to take home some acoustics, and um, I answered a bunch of their questions, and they were just the sweetest. I don't think anybody was over 18, maybe, in that room. Great. That's great, because we need the new crop of, of rock stars coming up. Yeah, the ones that can really sing and really play. Now, let me ask you, do you feel like Hart had been around for so long and it wasn't, you know, I also saw Hart as with you and Anne, it was, you know, a Paige Plant, a Tyler Perry type of thing, you know, singer, guitar player, you right. had that whole thing going on. Do you think, do you feel, because I know how I feel about it, but do you feel that Hart really helped pave the way for women in rock and roll? You know, yes, I do. I Good. think uh, the more we, the more we've been doing it, the more we kind of appreciated the fact that so, so many women came up to us. We did a lot of meet and greet experiences with fans, fan experiences, and so many women, almost to a person, were, said that to us. And it's like I would never have been brave enough. I wouldn't have tried to play guitar. I wouldn't have been become, I wouldn't have made a band, I wouldn't have, you know, helped my daughter learn how to play or be in a mm. band. So, so, walking into this initially, when we started, I mean, when I started playing guitar, I was about nine, mm. and I, that's way before I had any, um, you know, gender specificity about playing guitar or not playing guitar, I just wanted to be the Beatles, you know. Yeah. Not marry the Beatles, be the Beatles. Right. And uh, so I, I was always a little more confused later on when people said, wow, you're a girl and you're doing that. It's like, well, yeah. You know, <laughs> I didn't think it was different or odd in any way. But it, I think part of that was the, the time of the late 60s then and the 70s, which was more mind expanded and there were more opportunities that seemed wide open for women to do anything and not just in, uh, raise children, you know, or yeah, yeah. stewardesses or moms right. or waitresses or teachers. So there was just, it was wide open. And then it kind of, I think the window closed again more towards the 80s <laughs> when it was all about the image. Yeah. And the MTV era kind of, really shifted all the perception away from the freedom that women could enjoy. And so then, you know, I think going to the Little Kids Rock thing and seeing so many girls coming up through the system, it's really exciting for me to see that they're uh, they're on it. Yeah, me too. 
so again, Road Case Royale, First Things First is the name of the album. And you know what else, too, is 10 songs, 40 minutes. You didn't go overboard, which is what I like. You know, as you know, in the age of, of CDs yeah. and, you know, people go on for 74, 75 minutes. And, it, it, it you know, people start to cherry pick the album. Whereas here, it's there's nothing to cherry pick. This whole album is a cherry. And I'm not just uh -huh. saying that because I got you on the phone. Yeah, it's like a fresh take. It's a fresh take on rock and soul, kind of. Yeah, and, totally. Uh, you know, I think it, it's a sound that's identifiable as Low Case Royale, which a lot, of sa a lot of rock or pop music these days is uh, homogenous, and you can't distinguish, in, you know, largely because of pitch correction, who's the singer mm -hmm. or who's the, who the band is, and who can actually play or sing. But anyway, um, yeah, so I think, I agree with you. I think 10 songs is, you know, not too long. It's not too much to expect of the shortening human attention. Span yes, exactly. And it's got enough of, enough of its own character and different, the imprint is a little original sounding. So I, I think that something that fell together so quickly it turned out very strong. I'm really proud of it. It yeah. is very strong. And again, the more I listen to it, because, you know, I'm more of a rock guy. And, you know, I, I love R&B. Don't get me wrong. I love soul. But the more I listen to this, the more I'm really, like, into it. And, and it's it's opened me up to more R&B. Oh, that's cool. Well, there was a lot of R&B that Zeppelin kind of reinvented. Yeah. So much great. You know, stuff that everyone borrows from other great stuff, always in rock music and music in general. But, uh, yeah, there's there's the kind of, the way Ryan Waters riffs. Yeah, um, he's, he's a great together. player. They're very more Zeppelin-y. More Zeppelin than a lot of R&B, but Zeppelin borrowed from R&B, too. Sure. So. It's an interesting blend of... It really know. is, because you hear the R&B and you hear the Zeppelin sort of all at the same time, and again, that's what makes it fresh and makes it good. So, yeah, it's a strong album. Yeah. It's really good. Um, you know, I am so glad that it's getting the attention that, that it deserves. I'm so happy that you're digging on it. I'm really. totally digging on it. All right, I want to ask you for a very quick favor, <laughs> and this is sort of for my girlfriend. This is sort of we've talked about this song and it's one of your songs even it up which you have on the album and i love this arrangement that you did so i'm going to you. add you're welcome and i am going to ask you to to indulge me and finish this little lyric that we have loved for years which really hooks you into the song okay and when you were hungry I when you were hungry i bought you your breakfast <laughs> Thank you so much. A crappy little performance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just love the way you know you you needed to stretch out the word bed, and you know from years ago I've always loved that, and it's just one of those parts of the song that just yeah. kicks you, you know, and stops you every time. So thank you for indulging me in doing that. It's so a, it's a good one. It's, that it's it's playful, right? So it's a, it's like a woman who's like reading the riot act. To the guy who oh yeah <laughs> use her, but she's got her hand on her hip and she's kind of uh uh uh, uh huh uh, yes so totally it makes it more fun than just accusational yeah yeah very cool Nancy I want to thank you very very much for doing this yay what a blast thank you okay good luck with road road case royale and we will be seeing you on the road pretty soon nancy wilson everybody thank you nancy thanks jay thanks for having me all right bye take care bye-bye